Capsule wardrobes are a wonderful way to get more wear out of your clothes and that's why I've been following the system since 2016 when I first got into slow fashion and minimalism. Since then I've made countless videos about it, I even have a masterclass where I teach my students how to build a capsule wardrobe step by step, one that is unique to you and your style, packed with all the knowledge I've gained from not only doing this on my own but also since becoming style coach and color consultant. It's safe to say that approaching the system really changed the way I look at clothes as something valuable and deeply connected to who I am as a person. And I'm 100% certain that it has changed my spending habits for the better too. I love how easy it's become to put together outfits because my wardrobe feels representative of who I am and because most of what I have can be mixed and matched across seasons and occasions. Since the weather has been all kinds of tricky this summer, it's been so wet and cold in Denmark for weeks upon weeks, my wardrobe has been a little all over the place. I've had to pull out a few warmer pieces from storage too and I've just been thinking to myself this needs a rejig especially since the autumn season is also just about to kick in and so it struck me how about I pretend it's my first time ever building a capsule wardrobe and then share the whole process with you guys if you think that's a good idea too and if you enjoy this video make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for more slow fashion content from me so let's get into it here's me pretending to build a capsule wardrobe from scratch taking into consideration all the things i've learned since building my first capsule back in 2015. First thing I'll do is turn straight to my wardrobe. You see, one of the biggest mistakes I see people making when first building a capsule wardrobe is to find some sort of a capsule wardrobe checklist and then more or less focus on buying those items or at least the ones that are missing from that predefined list. And while a checklist can be helpful, this is not necessarily the most mindful approach. A capsule wardrobe should always start with you and your existing wardrobe at the center. Start with what you have, start with what's already working, be creative with that, and then move on from there. That's the most sustainable thing you can do here and now anyway, and sustainability seems to be what gets a lot of people interested in capsule wardrobes to start off with. I'd also say that this is a process that can take days, weeks, maybe even months, depending on how focused you'll be able to work on this. In order to truly know what to put back into your wardrobe, you'd need to get to know what I call your style identity, or more commonly known as your style keywords. And how do you do that? Unless you know yourself very, very well, to me, a style identity analysis of some sort is vital in these cases. Sure, you could gather up tons of inspiration on Pinterest and make a vision board of how you want to dress, but one of the biggest lessons I've learned since starting is that personal style is so much deeper than just the visuals. Not to mention the fact that what you see on Pinterest might look completely different on you because, well, as human beings, we come in all different shapes and sizes, and even though you might have similar items in your wardrobe, there's differences between cuts, materials, textures, that can make the outcome completely different for you. A true capsule wardrobe for me is about connecting aesthetics with your personality. It's about choosing fabrics, fits and proportions that align with your unique shape. It's about finding a color palette that you feel comfortable with and it's about being able to put together outfits for any occasion with more ease. Finally, it's also about committing to better spending habits in general, buy less and buy better. Connect all of those dots and you're well on your way to much more lasting, satisfying and meaningful wardrobe. And I kind of skipped some of those steps when I built my first capsule wardrobe seven years ago and my focus seemed to be more on following that specific checklist and that predefined idea of what a capsule wardrobe looks like. And although it was a great start, it just didn't quite hit the spot for me in the long run. I'm definitely repeating myself here, but in case there are any newcomers out there or just if you need to refresh, let's just quickly go over what a capsule wardrobe is anyway. Capsule wardrobe is a term used in American publications as early as the 1940s to denote a small collection of garments designed to be worn together, which harmonized in color and line. The term has come to refer to a collection of clothing that is composed of interchangeable items to maximize the number of outfits that can be created. So the concept refers to a way of structuring your wardrobe so that you only ever have what you can actually wear in front of you. Everything that's out of season or that you simply need a break from is stored away. That way, getting dressed can be done with much more ease, or at least in some cases, because a capsule wardrobe might not be the perfect solution for everyone. Now, I made a whole video about that a while back, which I'll make sure to link on the screen and down below for you if you want to dig a little deeper into that, especially if this all sounds a little too out of reach for you and your situation. 
So what counts in a capsule wardrobe? It's totally up to you, but I tend to only count everyday wear as part of my quote unquote real capsule wardrobe. So essentially what I wear most of the time when I go to work or what I'll wear during weekends. I then like making mini capsules for everything else, special occasions, workout wear, lounge wear, etc. Socks and undies, practical wear and similar items usually don't count for me, but I still try to adopt the capsule wardrobe mindset to every part of my wardrobe. So for bags, I like making sure that I have have a few different options for different occasions like work, which would typically be a roomier bag, a few crossbody bags for going out and for weekends. And then I like keeping the color palette coherent with my shoes and belts so that I can create color coherence within my outfits. Same with occasion wear pieces, I'll just have a few versatile pairs of shoes, maybe a dress and a skirt and some nice tops that I can easily wear with any of my everyday clothes, just so that I have a few core things I know I can always count on and that makes me feel amazing. When you start Start diving into these separate categories within your wardrobe, so work, weekend, workout, special occasions, gardening, hiking, or whatever activities you have in your life, that's really what's going to dictate how much you should have within the different segments of your wardrobe. The context is really key here. There's no use of having an overly dressy wardrobe if you never have any special occasions to wear these clothes to. What counts in a capsule wardrobe is what you'll actually be able to wear. That is the short answer. So these days I try not to put a specific number on my capsule wardrobes and how many items I have in these. I know many templates will prescribe around 35 pieces, but some piece seasons I can do with less. So let's say around 30 pieces. Other seasons I might have more items in my wardrobe, maybe around 40 items. This is all very dependent on the weather, but also just what I feel like wearing that specific season. Of course, the goal is to discover how powerful it is to have less when it's the right items. And I also think it's a good approach when you first start out to limit yourself to a certain number to help navigate and give you some direction. When you limit yourself, you become more creative with what you have, which is ultimately the goal here, but it can potentially also have the opposite effect, which will push you further into a style rut and maybe even make you consume even more than you did before. So find that sweet spot that makes sense to you. And again, you'll find that by following a wardrobe slash lifestyle wheel. So before jumping to the act of decluttering or structuring my capsule wardrobe, I'd recommend doing a style identity analysis of some sort, because like mentioned before, this is a really vital part in terms of figuring out what the foundation of your wardrobe should look like. Wardrobe basics are not the same for everyone. So either try to do it yourself or get a professional wardrobe review or edit. I offer both on my masterclass where you'll be taking through how to self analyze, or you can book me for one to one sessions where we go over your style identity step by step. I do also know of other amazing creators and stylists who offer this service and I'll make sure to link those down below for your convenience. So this is where you analyze your style identity, meaning you take a look at your current life, your lifestyle and the requirements you have for your clothes in not only an aesthetical sense, but also psychologically. Like what is it you're trying to communicate through what you wear? Some people also go through a body shape analysis or color analysis, and no matter how far you decide to stretch at all. I just think this makes the actual decluttering process so much easier and it also keeps you focused moving forward so that in time you'll stop buying things that are not right for you. And sometimes it can be so hard to pin out these things on your own. It's always a bit of a trial and error process. I always say that it's harder to read the label when you're inside the bottle. So getting a second opinion and a 360 degree view at your wardrobe from the outside like this is really a great investment in yourself. To give you an example of my style identity, here are some things that are key for me to consider when I'm curating my capsule wardrobe. So my style keywords are mainly casual, classic and edgy. And then I have a bit of a romantic style personality hidden in there, but it's mostly for special occasions. For colors, I'm a soft, cool, light color type. So this is typically the kind of colors I stick with within my wardrobe. I feel amazing in these kind of colors. They're easy for me to mix and match and combine. And it's also a great way for me to like express my personality a little bit more. For body shape, I've found out that I have a slightly longer torso than legs. So typically I try to balance out by wearing bottoms that have a slightly higher rise. I'm also what I call bottom dominant, which means that I have wider hips compared to my shoulder line. So typically I'll go for bottoms like a straight leg or like an A-line shape. So these are all things that are connected to my style identity and things that I need to take into consideration, things that have made me so much 
much more focused with what is actually right for me and my style. So once you've got the foundations of your personal style laid out, it's time to proceed to the actual declutter and organization. Now, when approaching my wardrobe, I could take everything out. That's usually what I'd advise to, but really it depends on the state of your current wardrobe. Taking everything out just to stack it on the bed or on the floor might make you feel even more overwhelmed. So where it can make sense is especially in the act of putting it back into your closet because it forces you to think a little deeper about what pieces you actually want to wear or not. Not just now, but also moving forward. So this is just to make sure that nothing gets left behind. So the repeating act of asking yourself, is this item really me, is what can help you build better styling habits moving forward. So I usually like utilizing something like a rail to put my clothes on and then I also use my bed and I like emptying my entire wardrobe just so that I can give my actual closet space a good clean before putting things back. So step one, take everything out if it makes sense. Step two is to start making piles. So the different piles could look like this. We have some different yes piles and then we have some different no piles. So the yes piles could be in season, which essentially goes back into your wardrobe. Then we have things that are out of season, things you cannot wear right now, but that you definitely will at some point, or just things that you feel like taking a break from. This is something I really love about having a capsule wardrobe because you take a break from it, which essentially also makes it last a little bit longer. Plus you get to shop it and feel like the excitement of getting reunited with these pieces at a later time. So store those away and then we have to be repaired. So you need to schedule a day to kind of deal with that. Either take care of it yourself if you have the skills or maybe if you have a good tailor in town, someone who can help you repair or alter these clothes, then maybe it's good to schedule a day to actually deal with that. Then we have the no piles and I have three different kinds here, whereas one is more of a maybe pile. So the maybe pile, again, I would recommend storing this away. I always like to distinguish between active and passive items within your wardrobe. So the active items are those that you wear a lot and that you love wearing here and now. Passive items are items that you still love wearing, but you just feel like taking a break from them. Could also be items that are in a different size than what you are right now. Maybe you're expecting to get pregnant or maybe you have a weight that fluctuates. So you can store away these kind of passive items so that you can bring them in again if you ever need them. Then we have the no pile, just plain old no clothes that you have outgrown or that it's just no longer your style or it's just not doing it for you anymore. It could also be that you've switched jobs and you won't ever get to wear these specific pieces again. So I like to look at it as my responsibility to make sure that these get sent off to like a proper new home or at least that they get utilized in some way or the other. So that could be selling these items, maybe swap them with friends or family. Maybe you could donate them to some very like specific places like a girl home or a family in need. And then we have the worn out pile. So clothes that are worn out, stained or something like that, something that cannot be repaired or something you know you're not going to repair. You could either recycle them or you could downgrade them. That's typically what I do. I downgrade it for like at home wear or for gardening, for painting, stuff like that. There's almost always a way that I can utilize things like this. Something else I would recommend is to try things on. So check for the quality. Does it still fit? Do you still like it? Does it fit your style identity? Is it easy for you to style it? Does it fit your overall style profile? Again, including aesthetics, fit proportions, color, texture, materials, everything. And sometimes it's just easier to like tune into that feeling of, you know, that item, does it feel right when you try it on? And then of course, what happens next is the organizing bit. So I like having all of my stored away pieces at the top of my wardrobe in different boxes. We also have an amazing wardrobe in our entrance hall where I keep all of my winter coats, all of my out of season shoes and stuff like that. That's kind of the next thing that you would have to look at. And I of course recommend finding a system that makes sense to you and whatever storage space you have where you live. Once you've pared your wardrobe down, I would recommend taking some time to see how everything feels. You might already be aware of some gaps now. Let's say you've outgrown some pieces in your wardrobe because maybe your body has been changing, maybe you recently got a new job, or maybe some of the pieces you already have were worn out and now you need a replacement. So note all of these things down, like make a wish list, but then also give it time. It's incredibly easy to get sucked into social media and led to believe that we need everything we see there or that we need everything 
doing all at once. And in most cases, we don't. In a recent article from British Vogue, they describe how researchers from Berlin's Hot or Cool Institute found that we should only be purchasing five new garments a year in order to stay in line with the Paris Agreement goal of limiting global warming to 1.5 Celsius degrees if nothing else changes. That would mean shoppers in the UK alone needing to reduce their consumption by up to 80% in some cases. I'll leave a link to the article down below. It's quite an interesting read. We did also talk about it in one of our recent podcast episodes. And I'm not saying this to make you feel guilty, but it does put things into perspective. And I think that's why it makes sense to just give things a little time. As far as I'm concerned, this doesn't count like buying secondhand. So it's more if you're buying like new pieces, at least that's how I read it. So of course, like buying more secondhand pieces would be a great solution here if you need more than those only five new items. A habit is formed when we succeed in making the habit feel satisfying, not when it feels like a punishment. So look at it this way. You get a wardrobe that makes you feel happier, calmer, more in tune with your true self. You'll remove yourself from feeling super stressed out when you get dressed in the morning or for a special occasion even. You might even start getting compliments on the way you dress, which is always nice. And you're doing something meaningful and potentially good for the planet by trying harder to bring down your consumption of new clothing. So that was a lot. But there you have it guys, an appreciation video for the capsule wardrobe system, if you will. But more just a reminder of some of the things that are important to keep in mind when you are trying to improve your style and spending habits. Context and nuance is so important because we're all different. But either way, having fun with fashion and style is definitely achievable even when you practice slow fashion principles. If you guys would like to see a capsule wardrobe tour, just a, a look inside of my wardrobe, just to touch a little bit more on organizing your wardrobe and just show you how I've organized my own. Um, nothing has really changed majorly over the past couple of years, but I'd love to offer you an, an updated version. Do let me know down below if that's something you would like to see, then that could kind of be a natural addition to this video. I definitely hope this video was inspiring. I hope it got you thinking of like the best way for you to get started with your first capsule wardrobe. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button, make sure you subscribe. I would love to have you here. Thank you so much for watching as always i really appreciate it and i will see you soon with another video bye guys